It is confirmed Cardano is about to go through its largest hard fork we've seen in the last two years since the Vassal hard fork. This was in September of 2022. As you can see, this headline here from Coindesk, Cardano blockchain heads for Chang hard fork, the biggest upgrade in two years. We're going to talk about Chang, who's ready, who's not ready. We're also going to talk about what happened to price last time we had a big hard fork, which was, of course, Vassal back in 2022. And then a big topic of conversation within the Cardano community. Once that treasury is unlocked, what should we do? As an ADA holder myself, what am I looking to do? What kind of proposals am I looking to put in? What kind of proposals am I looking to vote yes, to vote no? Should we lock it up? Should we burn the token? Should we use those ADA tokens to buy Bitcoin? There's a lot of conversation. I'm going to give my input on that as well towards the end of this video. So make sure to stay tuned. So let's talk about the official announcement of the announcement this is from intersect chang hard fork update number 10 september 1st hard fork is a go initially this was delayed uh, according to mr hoskinson to give exchanges more time to get ready for the hard fork uh this is again from intersect the working group including community leaders cardano foundation emergo and io unanimously agreed to initiate the first phase of the chang hard fork on the cardano mainnet SPR readiness is sitting at 92%. Exchange readiness is sitting at 90%. And DAP readiness is over 50%. No critical issues were reported. We're ready to take the next big step in Cardano's decentralized journey. Join us on September 1st for a special X event. And you can go to their X handle, Intersect MBO, to, uh, to register for this spaces when it's happening when the, um, when the hard fork goes live. Again, they mentioned the uh, node operators, the SPLs. Let's take a look here. 94% on the mainnet are already operating on node version 9.1, which is exactly what is needed for the Chang hard fork combinator to go into effect. We mentioned the exchange readiness. The big one here, of course, the largest exchange in the world is Binance. And they are officially ready for the Cardano Chang hard fork as exchange readiness hits critical levels. And here is a visual representation of exchange readiness, around 41 exchanges representing 71% are currently ready for the hard fork. Seven, uh, seven of them, 12%, are in progress, and only 10, 17%, have not even started yet. To those 10 exchanges, what are you guys doing? Why have you not even started yet? Shame on you, I don't even know your names, but come on guys, get, get, your, sh get your shit together. Now, a lot of people are saying, hey, is this a buy the rumor, sell the news? Should we sell our Cardano in anticipation for Chang hard fork? Well, let's take a look at what happened last time. So this article reads, Cardano holders prepping to cash out after the Chang hard fork. Now, I mentioned Vassal was the last big one. This was September 22nd of 2022. Let's take a look at what Cardano's price did in those seven days. So we have three days leading up to and four days after. So seven day window, we saw Cardano initially when the market opened that Monday, had a small rally, and then we had a spill off down to around 42.9 cents. The day of the hard fork, Cardano rallied around 7.6%. And then from bottom to top, this includes the wick, Cardano rallied 11.5%. And then it started spilling off. But guys, if you remember, 2022 was when everything started to hit the fan. Shit was in the fan. Uh, we had Three Arrows Capital, we had Voyager, we had BlockFi, we had so many other ones. And then, of course, in November, Sam Eggman Freed and FTX. But seeing as how it price reacted in that week, uh, three days before, four days after the hard fork, Cardano's price actually uh, improved and went up. Not to say that that's exactly what's going to happen this time, but why on earth, if you've been a holder of Cardano, would you sell right before they're about to turn the keys to the car over to you? Why would you do that? You wouldn't do that. So I, I find it hard to believe this article here that they're prepping to cash out. Now, of course, some people will sell, but the true Cardano community, the true believers, they're not going anywhere, myself included. Uh, we'll take a look at some of their metrics and growth. Then we'll get into the conversation about what should be done with the treasury. So this is from you today. Cardano power users grew significantly in quarter two. What are power users these are users uh, where they take into account uh, ratio of transactions to active addresses, daily active addresses. This metric climbed 8.5% quarter over quarter to 1.62, indicating an increase in power users of Cardano. Also, one thing I've highlighted down here as well, 
the USDM stablecoin and my USD stablecoins emerged with market caps growing of 2,500% and 694% respectively. So slowly but surely, the ecosystem is growing. And I can't imagine the amount of people that are going to pile in once they realize they can have a direct impact and direct say on the direction of Cardano. I want to share this as well. This is posted from the Cardano Foundation. Just in case you were lulled to sleep by the boring price action, just to, just to give you a refresher of why you probably got into Cardano in the first place and why you should continue to stay in Cardano, uh, peer-reviewed research. We talked about this with Charles on our interview. Check out our Cardano playlist. That video is in there among other Cardano videos as well. These things take time. Some research papers take three years. Some take three months. But at the end of the day, Cardano is never going to launch a project that has not been peer-reviewed. Scaling optimization. Charles talked about this. Four scaling solutions that are being sought after in parallel. Um, deterministic execution, right? Their uh, UTXO model. Sophisticated solutions when it comes to competitive capabilities. We know they have their partner chains launching. There's talks and rumors and buzz around Algorand and Cardano per, uh, almost partnering to create a decentralized AI platform using the Cardano partner chain. Uh, advanced storage, efficient metadata records, international data standards, right? Meets industry standards and efficient retrieval and auditing. And interactive information, right? Streamlined readability. We saw, and I want to share this post here from Big Pay, who's a, a pretty pretty big uh, voice in the Cardano community. We know uh, there's been a lot of issues with a lot of blockchains uh, going down. The most recent one being TonCoin, right? The network completely stopped transactions. They stopped validating transactions. They stopped pushing transactions through. So he posted, I never thought Cardano doesn't shut down would be a good selling point in this industry, but it's become evident it is, but it's becoming evident is Cardano has never shut down once in its history. In fact, I believe this was about a year ago when they had that node degradation. I believe about 50% of nodes went offline, although it did affect the speed and the transaction uh, speed on the network. Transactions continue to go through. The blockchain never shut down. And so this is the fruits of the labor of spending all the time, all the money, all the resources, all the peer-reviewed papers, everything that you guys, everyone says takes three years. It takes too long. This is the benefit of it is when you're trying to onboard an entire government or a sector of a government or an entire financial industry, you're going to go to them. You're going to say, hey, look, uh, we've been around for 10 years, for 12 years, for 20 years. Now, once has our network gone down, we don't have any VC funding. We don't have any pumponomics. We don't have any... Um, issues on a fundamental level. We have a slew of researchers, cryptographers, and developers working on the network. And now, guess what? We are fully decentralized. So if you'd like to, government of Argentina, or wherever you may be, you can hold some ADA tokens and have a say in the direction of where the blockchain is going. A lot of exciting things. Now, with Chang Hard Fork, one thing I'm very excited about is the unlocking of the 1.5 billion ADA treasury. Now, this has caused a lot of discourse among the Cardano community, we're seeing our people saying we should use the coins to buy Bitcoin to hold as a strategic reserve. We should use the coins to market. We should take those coins and burn them. We should use it. So there's a lot of discourse and a lot of people are saying, look, when we start to approve some of these proposals, it's going to be immediate sell pressure. The price is going to go down. It's not really going to be good. I do have a take, but I want to share this from Stake with Pride on X. Uh, he, he, he or she reposted this from the Cardano uh, Reddit handle, adding Bitcoin to the Cardano treasury. Anyone also think like me that we should put a percentage of the treasury into Bitcoin? To which this uh, account responded, personally, I'm totally against drawing down from decentralized ADA treasury into other coins, tokens, stable coins, or $200 million fund managers. ADA is pure ultrasound money. Although I, I would agree, and you take a look at a project like Polkadot, right? Massive amounts of money being spent from the from the Polkadot Dow Treasury on marketing, right? NASCAR drivers and billboards and whatever else they were spending money on. And you can look at take a look, take a look at Polkadot's price, and it's kind of stayed at five dollars. Got up to like six, seven dollars, but hasn't really had any type of move to the upside. We saw Cardano go from thirty five to eighty cents. Now it came back down, but we haven't really seen that rally from Polkadot. So. A lot of people are looking at that and saying, is that what we're in for with Cardano? I challenge you guys to look ahead of that bump, that speed bump in the road. Although, although I do agree, of course, 
when you give out these money for marketing, people are probably going to cash that out for dollars to spend, unless, you, of course, you can spend data. Either way, it'll be sell pressure in the short term. But if we approve the right proposals, we give the right people money, although we might see that downward sell pressure in the very short term, in the long term, think about the effects it'll have on the network, the amount of users it'll bring in, the amount of dApps it'll bring in, the amount of developers it'll bring in, the amount of eyeballs on the Cardano network, revolutionizing the financial industry, whatever other industry you want to plug Cardano into, that is the potential that we're looking at here. So I challenge everyone watching to look past the short-term price action effects of selling ADA through the treasury and look at if we spend that money correctly and put it in the hands of smart people, people that care about what we're doing, people that have the same ethos of the average ADA holder, the same ethos as the founder, Charles uh, Hoskinson. I do believe, although in the short term, we might see our portfolios go down a little bit in the long term, it'll pay off a uh, 10, 20, 30 fold. Uh, and so that's my take on it. What are your take? on how that money should be spent, let us know in the comment section. Also, check out all of our Cardano videos we've done. There's a playlist towards the top of our channel on YouTube, and make sure to subscribe and catch one of our live shows Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one.